father-daughter duo in a moment uh, who has been taking their ideas of making fragrances and making it make sense. Folks, I'm so excited to be checking in with these uh, with this duo in a few moments, and we're going to talk to them about how they're going into the uh, the fragrance industry, and most importantly, what does that mean, especially in building generational wealth for their families. Now, this is certainly something that we have always talked about, but it's always a good thing to talk to folks that are living this. Uh, but before we get to our very special guest, we also joined by uh, another contributor here on The Culture. You also see him on Roland Martin Unfiltered. And this is our brother who is, serves as the host for the African History Network. You can check his work out at the AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. My brother, Brother Michael in Hotep, is joining me this afternoon for a couple of these conversations as well. Brother Michael, it's always good to talk to you, brother. How are you today? Hey, Faraji, I'm all right. How you doing, brother? I'm good. I'm good. Just very quickly, uh, as we um, uh, our guests will be coming on, let's talk a little bit about this level of entrepreneurship and talking about this uh, the, the the path of building of, of building generational wealth. You know, when you when I remember, brother Michael, when my dad has been an entrepreneur for years. He always had right. some idea on <laughs> what to do or on how to support the family. Right. But I remember he owned a. a um, he owned a, a small carryout slash restaurant in Baltimore years ago and uh, worked hard at it. And, you know, it was the, in that time period. I remember as a child just going to the restaurant and helping out and doing what I can. I remember, you know, him often talking about having family and friends to be supportive. And we know that in business, sometimes they say that, you know, never bring your family into the same business that you're doing. Um, but this is changing now because you can't build generational wealth without having family at the table. So I right. wanted to kind of get your take on on this idea of going to work with your family, building a business with your family, and most importantly, you know, um, creating a sustainable uh, uh, capital where you can continue to support your family on a major, major level. What's your take on this? Well, usually uh, in my degrees in business administration, the major in marketing uh, from Wayne State University, I taught entrepreneurship for seven years. I've managed African-American companies that had government contracts, city of Detroit, County of Wayne, state of Michigan, and family members worked in those businesses and adjacent businesses as well. Um, saying that you shouldn't go into business with family or shouldn't have family working business, things like that, um, no other ethnic group or culture in the U.S. really operates based upon that. They mm. just teach that to us. Mm. They just teach that to. They just teach us. Wait a minute, hold on, bro, Michael. Us. You saying that that's not that's not that's not like across the board. That's mostly a black from from. Uh, from they, had, they had to have why why did laws have to be created dealing with nepotism? Because people were bringing family into business. People, people were bringing the family into organizations. You look at uh, a history of family-owned businesses created in this country, whether it's, it's, uh, whether it's uh, dealing with uh, Walmart, whether it's dealing with, uh, and even friends, okay, whether you're dealing with Apple computers. But when we look at small businesses, okay, these are mom and pop stores. These are family-owned businesses. And then you have businesses that get handed on, handed down to the second generation to family. When you look at, and even if you look at the mafia, you're dealing with family. OK, so they teach that to us because family is the foundation of African-American communities, African-American culture. When we look at the cooperatives and the, 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 the uh, when we talk about cooperative economics, but understand the concept of cooperatives. These were the, the members of the cooperatives are part owners of the businesses. These are principles we brought with us from Africa. And when you look at a lot of uh, businesses who that we've had historically in this country, these were family owned businesses or they brought in family members, things like this. Now, the main thing that you want to understand is you want to make sure that you assign the correct uh, position and duties and responsibilities to the right person. OK, and this is something that I teach in my entrepreneurship classes. If you know Kiki has anger management problems, don't put Kiki on the register, cash register dealing with customers. <laughs> Because right. that's the that's the ticking time bomb. Okay. Right, 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 you need to have right. her in the back stock and shells. You need to keep her away from customers. But we go into gas stations, we go into uh grocery stores owned by Arabs and Chaldeans. You trying to tell me they don't have their family members working in there? 
You go in there during the summer, they have a 12 or 13 year old behind the counter taking your money because he's the son and, and he's out of school and he's learning the family business to take over. They teach that to us. That's not how they operate. Mm, mm. Well, I'm glad that you brought, I'm, I'm glad you dispelled that myth for us because I think that that's been something that's been told. Like I said, I've been hearing that for years. So uh, I, I'm glad that you broke that up. Yeah. So Just make sure you have the right person. Right, okay? right, right, right. In right. the position. <laughs> Some people shouldn't be in some people should not be in the business, period, whether they're a family member or your worst enemy or your best friend. It, so make sure you have the right person. But no, th th that's that's a resource for us, our, our right. family. And if we focused on that, we could really focus more on and create more generational wealth. Absolutely. Our very special guest is here. I want to welcome to uh, the culture here on the Black Star Network, Mr. Brian Watkins. He's been curating since, since he was 11 years old when he started his passion with his daughter, Nora. Uh, he was inspired to leave behind a lasting legacy and to, 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 to take on that idea of generational wealth to the next level. So together, they founded an NYC-based olfactive scenting and scent marketing company called Norian. And their mission is to bring the power of scent to a worldwide community and help Others create all factory extensions of themselves. Folks, that is the website for Norian that Mr. Brian Watkins and um, his daughter, Nora, have created. Man, oh man, where there is scent, there are memories. Brian, welcome to the culture here on the Black Style Network. How are you doing, brother? Thank you. Thank you. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. And yourself? I'm good. I'm good. You're also joined by uh, one of our contributors here, Michael and Hotep who is okay. a man about this, the black businesses, particularly uh, in the in the, in the the country and in, particularly in the city of Detroit. So, you know, we, we wanted to have this conversation with you. First and foremost, congratulations, big brother. Oh, you know, thank for, you. For, for, for kicking off this this uh, this business venture. Uh, you got your daughter that's been working with you. Y'all are father, daughter duo. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. I have a three-year-old daughter, so I can only imagine. I can't wait for the day she comes to me with a business idea. I said, Daddy, let's go in business together. I'll be like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. She's, that's, you know, again, that's the world right now. And I wanted to leave a legacy for her. I wanted to build something for her. I wanted to teach her about financial literacy and also teach her on um, how how to do a business and just having that bonding relationship. I taught her how to make candles and just, you know, teach her and everything in general. And that she's the, she's the co-founder. She actually, her name's on everything. Her name's on the trademark and everything. So, so first and foremost, let's talk a little bit about your history, your path to getting to this place. And then as you talk about bringing your daughter in, how did you got, how did you get introduced to the all factory uh, uh, business? Uh, it was just like a calling. So when I was 11 years old, it's just, I don't know. I love smelling things. I always used to go to the boutiques where my mom went into these uh, designer stores and I just, just smelled the sense of smell was just like great for me. And, um, and, you know, growing up, my mom couldn't, you know, she didn't, she wasn't buying us the, the high end uh, fragrances or the high end colognes. So I was just like, you know what, I'm going to make my own. <laughs> and wow. uh, I, I went to the different, um, went to different stores. I got oils. I got um, other uh, bases and I just started mixing. I didn't really know what I was doing at 11, uh, but I just trial and error. And um, that's what, that's what happened at 11. Just, and then moving on ever since going on further, uh, even in college or wherever throughout my life, I've always had a lot of fragrances. I never liked to smell like anybody. And I was always attracted. I, the first thing when I go into a room or go into a place, the first thing I notice is the smell. Wow. Um, you know, because the you know thirty percent of what you smell, you remember. It's actually the first impression. So, uh, if something doesn't smell good, like wow, you're always gonna remember that the first time you saw something or the first time you interacted, it did not smell good. Um, that's why you could smell something now, and uh, that could trigger memories of your childhood. It could trigger memories of anything. The sense right. of smell, your olfactive, huge. After that is huge. So, so, so your mom cultivated this 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 start for you to get into into this business right and, yeah. and you're 11 years old you're 11 years old right and so as a young black 11 year old boy you're like oh i want to go into like making sense i want to you know make candles i want to go into the fragrance business and, and 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 so talk to us about like was your family open to that or did they look at you and go what 
what are you talking about? No, no, no. Yeah, something like what am I talking about? But um, <laughs> they, they they knew I was always into fragrance and scents. Um, you know, I taught myself uh, how to make candles. I taught really? them same thing. Yeah, and I taught my daughter how to make candles. Um, just look up. You know, I'm a I'm a heavy researcher. Anytime I'm hyper focused on something, I want to know every and anything about it across every like I'll shut everything off and I'll just learn wow. everything I need to know. Um, so I did that um yeah, years back in college. Um when I found out I was having a daughter, I actually uh wanted to teach her how to make candles. So again, when she came of age, I taught her how to make candles at the age of five. And uh, she made candles with me now and she uh, approve um, or sign off on the different scents that, you know, we create. And now I have uh, perfumers that I have on the team as well and where we create the scents and um, she signs off on it as well. Wow. Wow. All right. We got a couple of moments before we take our next part. But brother Michael, you want to uh, post, you know, share any questions for our brother as we talk about this? Because I, I need to take a minute to just take in right. on his story right now. <laughs> right. Well, hey, hey, Brian, congratulations on, on the business and much success to you. Um, you have a uh, mood boosting sense from mm -hmm. uh, what I for, what I understand. Can you talk about can you give us some examples of how the different scents create a different mood? What type of mood do different scents oh. create? Oh, yes. Yeah. So a lot of people don't realize the psychology behind scenting. Mm -hmm. um, scent evokes and triggers certain moods or certain reactions from consumers. It's huge in uh, right. the business market or certain business know about it. That's why. Um, and what I do as well for different hospitality businesses, I create scents for them and I actually diffuse it in their establishment because just like anything, when you go into uh, some of these businesses or high end um, hotels, you walk in and you just say, wow, it smells good in there. Mm -hmm. Yes, because now you're going to remember that scent of the hotel. Anytime you smell something similar, you're going to say, wow, I remember that hotel. Or when people speak about that hotel, you're going to like, I remember it smelling good. So um, if when I sit down with um, clients, I say, what are you looking to try to invoke out these, um, you know, from your uh, customers? If you're trying to lift up the mood, if you're trying to have people be happy, you're trying to have people spend more, if you're trying to have people have a calm, relaxed mood, it determines what note and what type of oil I'm going to use for that particular scent. So citrus, for example, and, you know, bergamot, um, orange, those are, you know, it brings you up, it's lively, you feel right. good, it's mood boosting, you know, Things like lavender, things like eucalyptus, it's relaxing. It calms you down. Um, and those are just some of the things that, uh, and, you know, something like, you know, uh, like the woods, different type of woods, it gives you a more um, comfortable and just a uh, relax or and luxury vibe. So it all depends on what that person is looking for. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, these are things we learn in business school because my, my degree is in marketing. So these okay. are the things in the foundation of marketing and psychology. Mm -hmm. So, so these are things marketers have known for decades. Mm -hmm. Very Absolutely. good. Absolutely. And just like, um, if you see me in person, more than likely you'll never see me wearing, you never smell me wearing the same scent. I have over my personal collection. I have over six hundred, and I, hey. have, wow. yeah, wow. and I and hey, I know what? every single smell of them. Yeah. So I have it. I have it broken down to seasons, times of days, occasions, right. um, you name it. <laughs> You know? Hey, wait a minute. Hold on, man. Hold on, man. Hold on. <laughs> hold on, brother. Hold on. Now, I love a good scent, man. Hold on, man. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> you got over 600 scents that you use personally. Personal bottles. Through... Wait a minute. Personal, again? personal bottles, but I also have a lot of little decants, too, all over. So it's probably okay. close to a thousand. Now, are these all the 600 cents? Are those all scents that you made yourself? Right. No, so these are just in general. I appreciate scents from everybody. Okay. So, and I get inspiration from everything. So, I want to smell, you know, if something's unique, you know, because people's like, oh, wow, this smells bad. No, I mean, you just don't like it. Scent to scent is like a beauty, right? It's in the eye of the beholder. So, mm -hmm. I want to know how it smells because I appreciate any type of scent, whether I find it good or whether I find it bad. I, I see the beauty in it or I see, you know, what it does. Yeah. I hear hey, look, hey, look, hey, Brian, you will have the women and that's watching today. <laughs> going crazy. Pauline checked in and said, there's nothing like a good smelling man. Pauline, get off of yep. here, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, I, I, and I have recommendations if you want something, you know. <laughs> and I, um, by the way, uh, Mr. Hotep, right? Um, yeah, M. Hotep, yes. Yeah. Uh, I could see, of course, you know, 
uh, a Kappa knows how to smell good because I see you a Sigma, you know, you, you, right. I, you, you <laughs> we know how to smell good too. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> 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 hey, you're right. Look, I gotta take a pause, man. I'll, let me let me digest all this that you're sharing with us today, brother. We want to uh, certainly continue the conversation with Brian Watkins uh, of Norian. Him and his daughter have created Norian, a, a, an all black, old factory company. With that, uh, that speaks to your sense, folks. Look at this website. I just cannot get over how dope the website is. Where there is scent, there are memories. We're going to continue the conversation talking about. Norian entrepreneurship and so much more. And of course, get your questions and comments like Pauline. Pauline, I see you, sir. So stay with us. Those conversations, this conversation will continue on the other side, right here on the culture on the Black Star Network. <laughs> Folks, welcome back to the show. We have been talking to Brian Watkins, who serves as the co-founder of the All Factor Scent and Scent Marketing Company, Norian, a scent company that he is co-founder with his daughter, Nora. And Brian has been talking to us about uh, what it means to be uh, in that space, in that business, and also just blowing us away with the, his collection of scents of being between 600 to 1,000 different scents that he personally has in his collection, folks. Oh my gosh. I'm also, be, I'm also checking in with my big brother, Brother Michael and Hotep as we uh, talk to Brother Brian Watkins. And I want to open up the conversation for you to join us in the discussion. So make sure you post your comments and your questions in the chat, as we would love to hear what you say. Brian, uh, Brother Michael, Brian, I want to bring you back in. And, and Keena, let's do this, because folks are really interested in the fact that you got this Black-owned, New York City-based, all-factory company, scent marketing company. So let's put up the website once again, Keena. So people can see it. And, and this is Norian.com. Is that is that my correct on that, Brian? Yeah, Norin. Norin, excuse me, Norin.com. N-O-R-Y-A-N. Norin.com. Mm -hmm. And folks can indefinitely uh invest and and order from. So when they go onto your website, there we go. Thank you so much, Keenan. When they go onto your website, what 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 can they do? Can they order scents? Uh what what can they do? What do you want them to do? Yeah, so there's candles there that you could look at. Um, those candles have, uh, some of the candles have different scents from the diffuser and the diffuser oil. So you could order that. And then you could order uh, the diffuser oil. And we also bringing it into that whole hotel experience. We're bringing it into your car with higher quality oil with our car diffusers. And there's a home diffuser there too, uh, you could order as well. Um, and then there's the oils and the scents that's Again, you fill up with that. You fill up the diffuser with our oil and our scents, which is made for to handle our oil particularly. Wow. Wow. And when you say our oil, what makes your oil different than than uh, 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 someone else's or another company's oil? Oh, higher quality. If you go, uh, let me tell you, on this journey, I realize a lot of these companies, I don't want to say any names, but they don't use the best quality in their stuff. They, mm. uh, yeah, they use... Um, low quality and um because it's about their it's about their bottom line i guess but it's not a lot of high quality stuff you might think just because then you see the name that it's the best thing uh yeah a lot of the time it's probably not um but i wanted to make sure because it's the love of it for me and my daughter like we wanted the best like we wanted the highest quality that we could use we don't want to cut it and dilute it that's something that a lot of companies do they dilute and cut their oil down so um, you know, you're not really getting the 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 full effect of it. Absolutely. So, so talk to us a little bit about getting into this space because mm -hmm. I'm not. I, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Brian and Brother Michael. I'm not. I haven't heard of a black owned all factory set marketing company before, right? Like, I, I, I'm assuming that there aren't many of you in the space right now. Is that yeah. is that the, is that the landscape right now, bro? Yeah, that's a correct assumption because a lot of people first, a lot of people don't even know about it. Um, a lot of businesses don't know the effects that it could have on their particular uh, business and on their customers. So a lot of people don't know. Um, I've been in the whole fragrance space for a long time and I've just like studied the whole uh, psychology and the effects of different fragrances and different notes and different um, just scents 
on you, on the uh, on the human brain and just on a person in general. Um, right. So, yeah. And I've just again, I, I'm always you always have you you'll always catch me with some sort of scent on me smelling. I'm looking for inspiration anywhere. Um, and that's how I'm. I don't know. I'm just wired like that. <laughs> Hey, 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 and, and I'm glad that you are wild like this because we need it. We need it. And, mm-hmm. and and Brother Michael, you know, when we're talking about breaking into a new space, like as a person who, who who's a marketer, who understands the business dynamic, like when you're talking about breaking into a space like this, a space that has been dominated, not just by white people, but just by companies, because I mm-hmm. think a lot of us, we, we choose our sense based on uh, the company that's putting it out there more so you know when we don't see the face of the company like we don't see who runs i don't know uh uh some of these major scent companies so so you know to to get to break into that industry brother it it would seem like it is a herculean task is it not brother michael oh you got your on mute bro we got your on mute i'm sorry yeah i think it is a, a herculean task to get beyond just the uh, stage where you may be a vendor at an event yeah. and you just yeah. do it on the weekends right, and you, right. you have a table with the oils, things like this to get to the level that Brian and his daughter is at is really a Herculean task. But also, you know, as he talked about, you have to do market research. You really have to study the business and figure out, OK, what niche can you create in the business? What can you do that is hard for other businesses to do as well? And and when we look at the fragrance companies, whether it's uh, Fenty or whether it's Polo or different, whatever fragrance it is, a lot of them um, have celebrity endorsers Mm -hmm. and the celebrity endorser can become the face of the company. So you're competing against that. So you want to find what your competitive advantage is. And, um, you know, with Brian, he can really explain to people and educate people on uh olfactory senses and the type of moods you can put people in and then also how they can use those uh uh, fragrances as well to bring about the type of mood that they want also absolutely absolutely so you know brian what would you say your competitive advantage is my knowledge same thing my knowledge just like um brother hotep was saying yeah a lot of these companies they have the money they have the budget they hire um you know, they hire stars, they hire people to market and promote. Um, you know, they could do that. Me, I have my knowledge. I go around, I'm I'm talking to you personally. I'm like, I have a love, it's a love for me. It's not like, mm-hmm. yeah, let me just do it. No, it's a love. When I talk to you, you hear the passion, like, cause it's a love. I, I want you and your place to smell good like mine, right? Or right. I want you to um, smell however you want to smell. Cause it doesn't have to be necessarily smell like me, but I want, it makes me happy knowing that you love something and you just enjoy the smell of it. Like mm. it's great. My uh, my culture crew uh, member Janelle, she's a loyal watcher of the show and Black Star. She said uh, mm. you have a scent, a fragrance called the Barbershop. Yeah. <laughs> so that scent was based after one of my um, good friends I went to college with. He's a Q, by the way. Uh, his name is Shawnee Fair. Doing a lot of big things. Uh, he has a uh, barber academy in Westchester called Westchester Barber Academy, where he opened up a school for young black men, or just people in general, to teach them how to cut and actually uh, give them their first experience in barbering. And he just opened up a salon as well. So I went there and he, you know, again, he uh, started out in the entrepreneur world, business world before I did. So he's like a mentor and uh, he gives me advice as well on certain things. So I created a scent um, that's a uh, that smells like the old school barbershop based off of, based off of uh, his shop. That is dope, bro. Uh, we got a few moments left, but I want to, you know, it, are there are particular things that we need to um, to keep in mind because I, I, I want to make sure that we support you and what you and your daughter are doing, brother, because um, this is this is this is beautiful. This is beautiful. So break it down for us. What what kind of what kind of uh, products um, can we expect from Noyan? Man, we just have a lot of uh, we have a lot of things going on, and we so you could expect candles right now, 
um, and the diffuser. So we want to stay in home and in the car. So our car diffuser is going to be something that's going to be that's blowing up. Like I can't even tell you it's blowing up. And a lot of people want their car to smell luxury. They're tired of smelling like, you know, the, the, the tree <laughs> thing hanging, hanging in a car. They want, you know, you know, they want that. Hey, luxury yo, smell. And I hey, have bro, wait, that- look, bro, look, look, I thought we were friends. You coming on here. You got you dissing my car and all that, bro. Yeah. I, I, don't I, I didn't so. say who. I didn't say who. <laughs> I didn't say who. You know, I'm not dissing. I'm trying to help. No, nah, I get you. <laughs> so, 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 what about what about? Uh, so, you say you got you got car more um, air fresheners for the car. You mm-hmm. got some candles. We know you have some personal grooming scents as well on uh, as part of your product line, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, no, grooming, um, that's something that, you know, later on down the line, we want to get into like grooming and, um, okay. you know, things uh, for kids and just enjoy. Like I want to get, I have so much uh, that I want to do. Um, I don't want to expose everything, but I sure. want to turn it into, you know, a bigger brand. I, I'm not going to limit myself with just the fusion and, you know, can No, I want to get into, you know, beauty. I want to get into, you know, uh, bath. Um, I want to bring it there. Um, and I want to, and I wanted to bring it to the sense that, you know, uh, people in my culture and my community like and love, um, Absolutely. cause that's what, that's what it's based up off of too. And if I may say, I want to tell you a little bit about the branding of my company, cause everything I do has meaning. So, um, the name of course, Norin is a combination of my daughter and I, Norin Bryant, right. Um, and it actually means a symbol of love. Mm. And um, going to the logo itself. So that logo I did, I cleaned it up a little bit. And I'm a history major and I I was a history teacher. And uh, that's an ancient African symbol for the letter W, which is my daughter and I last name Watkins. So I cleaned it up to have it look like that. And if you look even deeper, right, it's an NY backwards. And it looked like the little crescent there. You know, Mm. you could say you're going from the, you know, bottom to the top. But if you look deeper, too, it's a C, NYC, because that's where we're from. There it is. There it is. Brother Michael, how important is that? Because that's dope as hell, bro. Uh, yeah, the branding. Yeah, the branding. The, yeah, he, yeah, he put, yeah. He put a lot of meaning and, and thought into that joint. Right. Well, uh, in, in explaining the branding, if he explains it to customers, that helps them build a bond with him and his daughter as well. And that helps them identify the brand. Uh, distinguish it from other brands that they may see, other oils that they may see on the market. Uh, so yeah, that, that's something fantastic. But that's something also his niche as well to be able to create something like that and have meaning behind it. Absolutely, brother Brian. We got a couple of moments left, but I'm wondering, are your sense one of our uh, culture crew members? They wanted to know, CW is his. Are your sense in stores at this point? Uh, no, so we're working on distribution, it get it being uh, more stores. So they're in 10 stores or in 10 states, stores in those uh, particular states. Um, so I, we're in Texas, Seattle, Colorado, of course, here in New York. But I want to get it into more. And, you know, just like Brother Hotep said, it is an uphill battle. You know, it's a lot of work dealing and trying to get it into uh, certain places and certain stores. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so let me let me let me ask this question because you come on to this show, you you know, this show goes into far-reaching places, places that you may not be able to go. What is it that you need right now to take uh, Norian to the next level? I wanted to spread the word. I wanted to get into more places. Mm-hmm. That's what I I wanted to spread the word. I wanted to blow because we're ready. We're ready. We just need that it to get there. We're ready. So that distribution, that distribution. Uh, so are you looking for any type of investors or any type of uh, uh, supporters at this point? Uh, right now, as far as investment, not really, just more. The support would be, um, again, the product. And, gotcha. uh, and on the business side, the B2B side, contracts. So contracts with more uh, people, more businesses in the hospitality spaces. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, brother Brian, you know, we, we put that ask out there and I'm, I'm a true believer that ask and you shall receive. So hopefully from this conversation today, some folks will start to reach, you know, reach out to you, connect with you and take uh, take the brand to the next level. But I just want to say on behalf of the culture here on Black Star Network, brother, man, you are fantastic. Big shout out to your daughter, Nora, man. Um, you know, and, and I'm looking forward to hearing about more great things coming from the two of you. 
and you know, trust and believe, brother, you always got a poem for uh, with us here on the Black Star Network to, mm-hmm. to talk about the next step of your business. So congratulations and, and welcome home, bro. Definitely. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Um, again, this is not the last that you're going to hear of us because, again, there's no stopping me. Right. Because Absolutely. this is this is bigger than me. This is a legacy for my daughter. And that's that that let me tell you that right there alone, the times where you just just like, oh my gosh, you just feel overwhelmed. That right there. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. What's your social, brother Brian? What, what's the social that we can connect with you on? So Instagram, it's N O R Y A N underscore N Y C. On Facebook, it's Norin N O R Y A N. On even TikTok, it's same thing um, at N O R Y A N underscore N Y C. And that's the same thing for LinkedIn and Twitter. There it is right there, folks. There it is right there. You got a new follower now, bro. Trust yeah. and believe. I'm about to follow you right now. So you got a new follower. Dope IG. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it, bro. <laughs> Keep up the great work, man. Give our peace and blessings and love to your daughter, Nora. And God Thank willing, you. we'll reconnect with you soon. All right? Definitely. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, fam. Thank you. All Folks, right, we got to take a quick pause. When we come forward, let's talk about the state of Florida and their fight against history with Brother Michael and Hotep. Stay with us. It's the culture here on the Black Star Network. Woo! Brother Michael, uh, we got 30 seconds. Go ahead with you. Yeah. I know you got your programs right. Yeah, this weekend, Saturday and Sunday for the African History Network, uh, uh, January 21st, January 22nd, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. We have two free class sessions on uh, Saturday, Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa. Scroll down some. Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school, and then uh, scroll back up to the first class. And then uh, uh, Sunday, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968, we'll deal with uh, the Harlem Hell Fighters. Scroll, scroll back up to the first class. The Harlem Hell Fighters will deal with World War One and the Red Summer of 1919, when you had over 25 major race riots in this country. Visit our website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com. You can register for these two free class sessions. Absolutely. Brother Michael and Hotep, host of the African History Network uh, podcast show. Thank you so much, Brother Michael. Truly hey, thanks, you. Raji. Okay, welcome. How's everybody doing today? Hotep, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network and host of the African History Network show. I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecture writer, and historian. So I was on Faraji Muhammad's show, The Culture, today on uh, January 19th, 2023. And at the end of uh, the show, uh, I made the announcement about two free online class sessions that I'm doing uh, this weekend. Uh, Saturday, January 21st, 2023, we're doing a, um, another uh, class session of my 16-week online course, Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, what they didn't teach you in school. And uh, this would be a free class session. So if you've been wanting to uh, take my uh, online course in the past, what we do with thousands of years of history and what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. You can join us for a free class session. Visit our website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com, theafricanhistorynetwork.com and register for it. And then uh, on Sunday, uh, January 22nd, uh, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're doing another session of uh, the second 16-week online course that I teach. Uh, from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1800 to 1968. So this class on Sunday will be a free class session as well. You can visit our website, uh, theafricanhistorynetwork.com, theafricanhistorynetwork.com, and you can register for these two free um, online class sessions. And we do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. You can go back and watch them anytime and just click right here for a free class session and register for it. And uh, so even if you miss the class live, you can go back and watch it anytime, okay? And you can register for the full 16-week online course. Um, it's on sale $60, regularly $130, okay? Just click right here to register here for Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding, understanding the transatlantic slave trade. And the second class that I teach on Sunday, um, 
January 22nd. And this this is our normal. Uh, normally, our second class is on Tuesdays, but I'm doing a special session uh, this Sunday, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, click right here for the uh, free class session as well of uh, from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, um, 1800 to 1968. And you can register here for the full class. So in our Sunday class, uh, in this particular session, we're going to deal with World War I, which is 1914 and 1918. And we'll also discuss the Harlem Hell Fighters, which was an all black regiment in the uh, in the U.S. Army um, fighting in World War I. We'll talk about the Harlem Hell Fighters and we'll also talk about the Red Summer of 1919. Um, where you had over 25 major race rides uh, in the country, uh, in Chicago, Elaine, Arkansas, et cetera. And you had African-American World War I veterans who fought against racist mobs, uh, white racist mobs during the red summer of 1919. OK, so we're going to talk about that on Sunday in uh, the class on Saturday. Uh, we uh, last class, we started talking about. Christopher Columbus and the history of Columbus. I shared excerpts from Dr. John Henry Clark's book, Christopher Columbus and the African Holocaust, Slavery and the Rise of European Capitalism. So we'll get deeper into Christopher Columbus and how Columbus and his four voyages um, helped to spread uh, uh, slavery, racism, capitalism, and the exploitation of indigenous people. And then also leads to the uh, Asiento de Negros being signed by King Charles V in August of 1518, which drastically expands uh, the transatlantic slave trade. Okay, and then we'll get we'll get into the development of the triangular trade and England getting involved in, in slavery in 1562, et cetera. Okay, so we're, we're dealing with this um, in our class on Saturday, uh, January 21st, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade. Um, you can so you can uh, register for these free class sessions. And even after the class is over, if you still have access to that free class session, you can go back and watch it as much as you want to. But you can also uh, we also have both classes in a course bundle. OK, so you can register for both classes for only one hundred dollars. That is a uh, at least a two hundred sixty dollar value. So click right here for register here for the course bundle uh, as well. OK, so we have all that information right on the home page of our website, the African History Network dot com, the African History Network dot com. So when you scroll down, it has the information about my radio show Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. The African History Network show on 9, 10 a.m. on the Superstation WFD up here in Detroit. We also broadcast on our social media platforms when we're live on Facebook, the African History Network, YouTube, Michael M. Hotel, um, and the Michael M. Hotel show also on Facebook. We have a PayPal and Cash App information here so you can support us uh, uh, as well. We definitely need your uh, financial support. Uh, this information here is about the uh, Happy Day of Excellence taking place Saturday, February 4th. 2023, 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. in New York City. Professor Jane Small, Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kamene will be there speaking to my teachers. So click right here for more information and to register and to purchase your ticket. You can also live stream the event as well. Um, and then we have uh, the information here for the courses. OK, right below that, the course bundle, as well as the individual classes. If you've taken any of my online classes in the past that I've been teaching going back to 2017, Email us for a 50% discount uh, on the course bundle. Email me at AHN show at the African History Network dot com. AHN show at the African History Network dot com. Or you can email me right through the website uh, at the top of the page. Just click on contact the African History Network. All right. So um, with these uh, online classes, uh, I developed a curriculum. Uh, for them. I've been studying, I'm a historian, I've been studying history 31 years, and uh, ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, I've been teaching that going back to uh, 2017, uh, on and off since 2017. Uh, very briefly here, if we just look at a brief overview uh, of the class, and let me pull this up here. Uh, so I do a PowerPoint presentation. We have book references, articles, uh, in the class, also share some interviews, 
that I've done with some of our scholars uh, as well. Okay, so in the, uh, let's pull this, let's go to the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so I developed the curriculum, I developed the PowerPoint presentation um, for both of these, both of these courses. Okay, so uh, we can't start studying our history and slavery, even when we study the transatlantic slave trade, which is important to study. We can't start in 1619 or the 1440s when the Portuguese get involved, like 1441, when the Portuguese get involved in the transatlantic slave trade. We have to understand the history chronologically and deal with the 800 year occupation of Europe by the Africans known as the Moors who enter into the Iberian Peninsula today known as Spain and Portugal from North Africa in 711 AD. This course not only deals with the transatlantic slave trade, but it also deals with thousands of years of history that leads up to the transatlantic slave trade uh, taking place, the transatlantic slave trade of African people taking place. August 20th, 2019 marked the 400th year anniversary of the 20 and odd Africans who came into Point Comfort in uh, really it was Hampton, Virginia uh, on August 20th, 1619 in what would be called the colony of Virginia. Okay, and one of the things we do within the class is how a lot of what we know about 1619 is false. All right, uh, and codified slave laws didn't even exist in any of the 13 colonies when those 29 Africans uh, from Angola came in in uh, 1619. But also African people have been uh, in the land we call the United States of America going back at least 51,700 years. So this year was known as the year of return as many African Americans were and continue to reconnect to Africa and they were traveling to Ghana and other West African countries. When we discuss the transatlantic slave trade, we have to first understand that African people are the original people of North, Central and South America. And we have been in the land we call the United States of America going back at least 51,700 years. Now, this does not mean that uh, the transatlantic slave trade did not happen. That's not what I'm saying. What, ha what we have to understand is that African people have been in this land we call the United States of America or what Native Americans call Turtle Island. We've been here going back tens of thousands of years before we were told that uh, we came here. OK, so we have to understand the difference. We did not first come to this land conquered and shackled and changed uh, by Europeans. OK, and that that is that is mentally damaging for people to believe something like that. They came they first came to this land conquered and shackled and changed. No, this was actually our land stolen from us. And one of the books that we use in the class is Dr. David M. Hotel's book. The first Americans were Africans uh, documented evidence. OK, and he's a friend of mine. I've interviewed uh, Dr. David M. Hotel a number of times. And so some of you have seen the interviews, have heard the interviews that I've done with him. And uh, this is uh, it was his first book, The First Americans Were Africans, Documented Evidence, um, which came out in 2011. His new book, uh, The First Americans Were Africans, Revised and Expanded, came out in 2021. And page 14 of his book deals with the discovery made in Allendale County, South Carolina, by Dr. Albert Goodyear, who's an archaeologist at the University of South Carolina. This discovery was made in 2004 that documents an African presence in uh, the Georgia, South Carolina area going back at least 51,700 years. And uh, they found 13 different types of evidence, 13 different types of evidence documenting this African presence. They found artifacts, architecture, campsites, carvings, uh, Egyptian writings, footprints and lava, genetic M174D haploid groups dealing with DNA and genetics, uh, linguistics, paintings, skulls, skeleton structures and tools. All right. So we get deep into this information um, in the class. And then this, and then uh, so that's on uh, Saturday, uh, January 21st, 2023. Uh, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, ancient Kemet, the Moors and the Ma'afa understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. Kim is one of the original names for Egypt. And uh, the Ma'afa is a key Swahili term, which uh, is in reference to uh, the great disaster, which is the transatlantic slave trade. So visit our website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com, theafricanhistorynetwork.com, 
to uh, register to, uh, for these free class sessions for both classes, and you can register for the full class, which you can also use with your children. I would say the content is PG-13. It's very visual. Uh, we have a text chat in the class, so you can ask questions. Uh, you can see me, I can't see you. Uh, we have uh, book references, articles, video clips, and for the books, usually I show you the, the text of the, of the pages that we're looking at on the screen. So it's very engaging as well. OK. All right. So watch watch out for me on Roland Martin Unfiltered on Fridays on the Black Star Media Network, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. I'm a uh, panelist on Roland Martin Unfiltered. I'm not just a historian. I'm a political commentator as well. Uh, you can watch on Facebook and YouTube, Roland, S., uh, Roland Martin on Facebook and YouTube or download the Black Star Media app. And then uh, also on usually on Mondays, I'm on Faraji Muhammad show. 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time on the Black Star Media Network uh, as well. And then my show, the African History Network show, Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time on 9, 10 a.m. the Superstation WFDF here in Detroit. Uh, but we also broadcast on our Facebook uh, fan page, the African History Network, the Michael M. Hotep show, and my personal page, Michael M. Hotep, as well as on my YouTube channel, uh, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. You can download the iHeart Media app uh, and search for 9, 10 a.m. Superstation and listen live or the iTunes radio app and listen live. And you can listen to our audio podcast wherever you get your podcast from. Search for the African History Network show We're on iHeart Radio, um, iTunes, CastBox, FM Player, TuneIn, a uh, number of different audio, path, audio podcast platforms. OK. All right, and if you like this type of information, you can support the African History Network, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App. Also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. So this helps us keep doing the research, stay on the air, keep broadcasting, uh, pay some of the bills, pay for these various services that I that I use, purchase more equipment, upgrade equipment, upgrade the laptop, et cetera. Okay, so we definitely uh, appreciate and need your support. Um, if you want me to do special customized classes, email me through the website, the African history network.com about that. And we could do group classes. If you want it for your church study group organization, et cetera. If you want shorter classes instead of this, this time around is 16 weeks. Normally this is a, uh, 12 week on, on, online class, but if you want a six week class, eight week class, et cetera, email me at, uh, at the African history network.com. We can set that up and African-American History Month is coming up. Black History Month is coming up. I have fantastic presentations for uh, Black History Month dealing with the origins of Black History Month, dealing with uh, also uh, what the annual theme of uh, Black History Month is as well. This year's uh, annual theme is dealing with Black resistance uh, for African-American History Month. And I have some powerful content uh, dealing with that. OK. All right. So. Remember, right now is correct. Wrong behavior is not over till we win. We're kind of forever. And we'll talk to you next time.